ladies and gentlemen. My next guest is James. He's with Zion Healing Center. It's actually a neuro uh, neuro feedback mm -hmm. center that helps people just uh, overcome addiction. They help them with uh, ADHD, anxiety, uh, fears, depression, depression. Yeah, yeah definitely depression. Insomnia. ADD is related with insomnia. They say it's a sleeping disorder. Uh, that's what my trainer was just telling me. I've never heard it, but most people with ADD struggle with insomnia. They um, do. Yeah. Huh. I didn't um, know. That. Most people with anxiety struggle with insomnia too. So those three are highly related. And he has a lot of fancy equipment here. I, do. Um, I was just playing with one of them. Actually, playing with two of them, and uh, he put my, you know, he put my head on one of those, and we did a full. Uh, Brain scan? You call it brain scan? Yeah, yeah, QEG brain scan. QEG brain scan. Okay. And, uh, man, tell me how this could really help people. Well, there's, I mean, gosh, here in Utah, we're one of the leading states for depression. I was looking up statistics the other day, and the country's in bad shape. We were one of the most depressed countries in the world a few years ago, and Ukraine was ahead of us. It's funny because this is before anything happened. Mm. But, you know, the United States, for being such a developed country really has a high rate of depression like one in five here in utah we're one in four so we're one leading. in four yeah do you yeah. think the weather um has anything to do with it or religion or it's a factor of everything yeah i mean i would think both of those two yeah i have so many people reach out to me in the winter even before i had this clinic and they were just like because they know that i had done some coaching life uh -huh. coaching they're like dude i'm struggling what's going on i need some help and it's just during the winter time sometimes yeah it is rough in the winter because i'm originally from california um, during the winter, it's actually my busy season at work, so I don't even leave the house that much, mm -hmm. just to hit the gym. Yeah. And there's no sun, and in California it's like sunny all year round. Yeah. So it was a little challenging, dude. Yeah. 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 yeah you got. You have to learn how to cope with that. Right. We're lucky if you haven't. This I was, I was watching videos of people from California, like, you guys, if you're depressed, you got to go out in the sun. And I was thinking, you don't live here. <laughs> yeah, you don't live here. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, you're not gonna go under the sun. I mean, you can exercise, do certain things. Uh, but photo so biomodulation. Dude, tell me more about that. <laughs> oh, my God. Just since you got onto that one. Yeah. Uh, there is some mitochondria. So this is super new, and I just, you know, I'm going to butcher the explanation. Cause just I, keep it in layman terms. Just, yeah, yeah. I had a doctor explain it to me, and if it's anywhere near as, as awesome as he made it sound and as good of results as he's getting with himself and with other people, they just did a study at Stanford um, on the effects of Alzheimer's, which is affecting a lot of people, and there's this age-related cognitive decline um, so they're they're finding that with gamma frequencies, um, which are not very well understood, so it's this is really cutting edge. Um, but they're basically finding that they can reduce inflammation in the brain. If we can stop inflammation, we will stop a whole host of other issues. So, so how it works in plain English is the gamma rays are just it's just a certain type of ray. Yeah, it's a high frequency above forty a, hertz, of forty forty times per second. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just put it over your face and your eyes, of course. Yeah. And do you keep your eyes closed? I believe, you know, I mean, I just unboxed it a second ago. So yeah. I, it's, <laughs> it's, I just have to read the manual. Yeah, it's <laughs> but so, uh, it's using sound and light therapy. And I think it's similar to the audio visual entrainment that we do right now, which is we're very effective. Um, I'm looking at this to possibly take the place or just be an option for people. And that do slows it. down your cognitive decline or gets rid of it if you do it enough? So think of these, I think of these as training for your brain. So it would slow down. It's really similar to exercise. We know we take care of our bodies. We know we're supposed to take vitamins and uh, or eat healthy and exercise. But it's the same thing for your brain. If you're if you're exercising it regularly, it's just going to be more flexible and yeah, stronger. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. That's why they say uh, people that retire, mm -hmm. they tend to die in five years. Yeah. Because their brain just slows down. Yeah, I don't want to retire either. Or just yeah. find a different thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah help you some know. people. Or, or start yeah. a side business, you know, help people start a nonprofit. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, what do you think it is that, like, when people work, you're you're constantly using your brain at yeah. work. Yeah. You're learning new things, especially here. Mm -hmm. Like, the technology is like, dude, it's like cutting edge. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, uh, you know, you have to figure out neurofeedback. You said we're using 20, 20 points. Mm -hmm. There's like something coming out in the future that's like 30 points. Yeah. You're like, well, dude, you have to keep up with all that. So yeah. your brain has to work. Mm -hmm. um, when when you retire, you stop. Yeah. And you slowly die. Yeah. What do you think that's from? <laughs> Just boredom? Well, I think that, yeah, I mean, I think, well, there's a lot of theories on that, right? But I think there's something to having a sense of purpose, um, just where you're providing value to the tribe. Yeah. You know? I think it's a natural kind of evolutionary thing from what I've heard is that when we become a burden to the tribe, our bodies kind of know that it's time to, you know, I'm, I'm not a expert on that, but it's kind of, you know, it's kind of time to go. I guess you're, you're just, you're dragging everyone down. You're dragging you know, everyone down. Point, so. Yeah. 
But the people who have lived the longer, they've studied these, you know, in like Sardinia, Italy, and some of these green zones where people live a really long time, they stay really connected. There's certain traits, uh, not only with the foods that they eat, but the way that they interact. Um, they, they keep really connected to society and they keep, they're valued. Um, they're able to contribute. And I think those things are really important that we, yeah. you know, do everything we can to, to, you know, build up ourselves and the people around us. Okay. You know? Let's just say hypothetically speaking, one of those people gets depression. Mm-hmm. They want to come to your uh, office for help. Mm-hmm. The rock me too, how you would help that person. Yeah. So probably um, we would start out like we did with you um, doing a brain scan. Okay. Um, see what's going on because mental health is so subjective. I don't know. There's not, there's not a test that you can do physically for depression. You know, they talk about it like a chemical imbalance, but there's no chemical test to do for it. The test is a PHQ nine and I can do it in 60 seconds with somebody. And that gives a diagnosis. I can send that into an insurance company, but you know, and then you can of course get a psychiatrist to give a real psych evaluation, which is more detailed, but it's all subjective. It's going to be how the patient answered the questions. Okay. You know, but, but this brain scan gives us data to match up with those symptoms. So a lot of people come in and they don't, there's just, there's not one cure for depression. So um, they might not know. I mean, their depression could be caused from an underactive part of the brain, or it could just be caused from an imbalance between the right and left hemisphere. You know, generally the left side of the brain is thought of as the happy side. And if the right side has learned to be overactive, that person's just going to experience less happiness because that's not you know, the <laughs> it's incongruent with each other. Yeah. Yeah. And so okay. we would work on something like that and say, well, we can train that left side of the brain and increase the amplitude through power training, which is one type of neurofeedback that will reward you for increasing that amplitude. So if you think our brains are always kind of going up and down, every time we change thoughts, some thoughts scare us, some thoughts make us feel grateful, totally different um, frequencies. Um, but, uh, when we're able to, you know, using our reward system, basically we're moving towards a target. So we're doing power training, we're trying to raise amplitude. So every time your amplitude raises, ding, 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 you're doing good. Every time it lowers, things get quiet. So through that learning process, it just happens in your mind, but we're primed for this. Um, we respond really well to rewards. Yeah, we do. Know. We yeah. do. External rewards. Well, we should yeah. learn to do more internal. Yeah, we can give ourselves rewards. I mean, yeah. I, I do it to myself all the time. I'm like, Hey, I woke up uh, early this morning, got my meditation done. I'm like, good job, James. You know? Yeah, that's good. That's I mean, yeah, that's actually I mean, how you should do. Or you hit the gym and you reward yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I do. I mean, I try to appreciate that thing. Gosh, I'm lucky to be able to work out. It's not. I don't see it as a burden. Like, oh, I've got to go work out. But you know, we're lucky to be healthy enough to work out. And I try to try to see it that way. Good. And that yeah, that's thinking optimistically. That's actually pretty good. That's how you should be thinking. Yeah. You yeah. should thank your brain for thinking that way. Yeah. Because you should I, have to train yourself, right? Thank you. I will. Um, so, so you guys put, let's just say someone has depression, you guys could put that on paper. Like here's the physical proof that this person has depression. Yeah. And it still won't be considered a diagnosis. The diagnosis will come from the person answering those questions. I mean, that, that's the current accepted standard, but it is really helpful to be like, well, what is this depression caused from? There could be several different ways. So when we see an imbalance in the brain or there's a certain part that we can work on, then we're going to focus that electrode and train that part of the brain to learn to self-regulate into more functional states. I mean, our minds are like an engine and when they're running smooth, they're going to perform really well for us. Yeah, they're flexible. They can go fast. They can go slow. They can stop when they need to. They can start. But some people go into, you know, something sad happens. They go into depression and they don't regulate out of it. They don't come out of it. Yeah. Their brain gets kind of stuck in this way of being and and then at that point, you have to learn a new way. Like, what are you going to do if that's all you know how to do from your past? You know, most people experience their past, and they just repeat the same patterns that they've had in the past because that's what's familiar, and that's all that they know. Or they take pills, which I don't really recommend. Yeah. To, like, I mean, that's that's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, some people need it, but I don't think you really. I mean, I feel yeah. like uh, uh, medicine or that, those type of pills mm-hmm. for depression and stuff, it's like a crutch. Let's just say you break your leg. Yeah someone just gives you that medicine it's a crutch mm-hmm. you're still limping yeah i think it should be a last resort you know i think there's definitely a place for medication and and for somebody who can't get out of bed because their their depression's gotten that severe they need something that's going to just get them moving because they're not going to go meditate they're not going to go yeah, to yeah, the gym yeah. and they're not going to read a new book they can't get out of bed you yeah. know so if that medication gets them out of bed so that they can then start doing, you know, so I think there's a place, but I think it should be last. Like, why is that the first thing that we go to? And that's the main tree. Most people don't even know about TMS. Um, that's, that's another. And TMS stands for? Transcranial Magnetic Stimulation. 
Tell me a little more about that, bro. This one's super interesting for somebody with severe. Now, this is being FDA. It's in trials for uh, PTSD, for anxiety, um, depression, Parkinson's. Well, it's already approved for depression. What so about ADHD? ADHD, it's. I'm not sure if it's in trials for that. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure because all we're doing is treating straight depression with TMS. And the way that we do it is by targeting the left prefrontal cortex at the left is the happy side, right? And there's the part that regulates the serotonin, dopamine, and these neurotransmitters that make us feel good. Um, that can be woken up through this electromagnetic stimulation. And uh, it's really, you know, to me, for somebody with severe depression, it will jumpstart that part of their brain back to life. And when that when that part's working, they're going to produce the serotonin. They don't need a reuptake inhibitor. They don't need a SSRI or medication because their nerves are going to be producing the the serotonin that they need. Tell me that stat where uh, uh, the pills only work oh, 18% yeah. of the time. Dude, I, I didn't know this. that. I actually doodled it. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Yeah, listen to this, ladies no, this and gentlemen. this is crazy. The STAR-D trials. This was an FDA-approved um, study that was done on, on the standard of care treatment for depression which is medication, uh, generally they'll try something first. And at the first, there, there's like, you go into stages, right? So the first time, either something works or it doesn't. If it works, sometimes it works for a while, but you sort of are on this, once you start depression medication, it's just diminishing returns from there on out. So at the first time, they could be 27.5% of people got results and got improvement in their depression. By the second time, it goes down 7%. Maybe it's down to like 20, down to 15, and then down to 7. By the fourth time that they're adding medications, your chances went down that you're going to get help from that. Lower than 7%? Well, seven, I think 7.9 was the last, was the fourth round. And so it's less than 10 for sure. After that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, definitely less than 10. It was like 7.9, I think. And um, But the likelihood of dropping out of the study by that point was 40% due to the side effects, which I experienced because I got diagnosed with depression and they put me on Zoloft and it worked for a while. And then I went off of it and then I went into a depression episode. I went back on it. And then all of a sudden I was with side effects the second time. And for some reason it just didn't work as well for me. And I, and I was left, I just didn't know about things like TMS. And so I just thought, well, this is it for me. Then, then now I'm with all these side effects that I can't even tell if my depression was that bad. <laughs> I was trying to evaluate. I'm like, was it really that bad? Cause now you know, I was married at the time and I was, you know, having sexual dysfunction. That was, that was one that really bothered me. And, um, but there's like dry mouth, headaches. And then it's funny because some of the, the risks of taking SSRIs is like you might become suicidal, which doesn't make sense to yeah, me. Yeah, it doesn't. For, <laughs> well, for depression. You know, you're treating someone for depression. Like, uh, the side effect could be suicide. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's awesome. Um, so, Okay, now I'm putting the pieces together. That's what led to you opening up this place because you just want to better the people around you. Yeah, and let, let me just finish the TMS thing by saying that the trials with, with our database of over 14,000 Neurostar patients showed that 83% got improvement compared to that 27% on the first round. So, and this was after treatment resistance. These are treatment, These are people that already tried and failed on medications. So this is like three times more effective. Like three times more effective, yeah. And there's no suicide or anything like that. No, there's like you might get a mild headache that you could take an Advil for because yeah. you know it's it's stimulating yeah. your brain and it, it can be a uh, a little bit uncomfortable, but nothing is going into your bloodstream, nothing's going through your blood brain and barrier, not, and it's not piercing your brain or your straw or your skin. No, it's no, not. not no, all. no, because I, I don't know, dude. Like you know, you talk about this. No, because yeah. some people are like you know, like you would think of different ways, like you drill the brain or something like that. But that's like old school. <laughs> old school, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say I saw these things where like back in the day with neurofeedback when they started learning this, they. I saw some gnarly pictures of like cats with their skulls taken. They would put the electrodes oh, right man. onto the brain. So nowadays, I guess they don't let. But some of those stuff works. Well, where I mean, back then, because I don't know if we would have discovered. Now, now we're doing it through the skull. You know, where these microphones are so sensitive, they're able to pick up your brain waves through. Yeah. Through this I thick saw skull that. You just did it to me thirty minutes yeah, ago. Yeah. Yeah. I literally had this like uh, it was like a hat like that covered my whole skull. Yeah, this thing. That uh, most people are can't see that, but uh, it, oh. it's really cool. It's like yeah. twenty points. That covers from the bottom yeah. of the your the top of your neck mm -hmm. to the front, like right above your eyebrows mm -hmm. and to the sides right by your ears. And there's like 20 points on your straw yeah. and uh, it just picks up the brainwave. Yeah. 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 And like I was literally looking. You can at, watch him. I was looking at the TV while my brain was doing certain things and I would start like thinking of different things yeah. and it would just change. The software is cool now because it used to be just raw EEG data, like what you're describing these brain waves, but now we can put it into the 3D projection maps. Um, 
where you can see your live brain activity, you know, showing up in colors and nice. Um, and the cool thing is, uh, like I, I realized when I close my eyes and meditate or go to that sweet spot, I could get there really quick. Dude, your alpha is crazy when you all of a sudden I'm like, what did you do? Like I just meditated. I think so. My initial, uh, my initial scan was five minutes with your eyes open. And then five minutes with your eyes closed. Mm-hmm. So I think I threw off the stats. But when my eyes were closed, I would just meditate the whole time. And then yeah, when my yeah. eyes were open, I was a little too wired. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that's cool. And you're like, hey, your alpha waves are like really calm. Alpha waves are like when you're hyper-focused. Yeah. And you're in this really calm, peaceful state. And you're able to either learn or just really focus on something that you need to get a task covered. Yeah. Would you agree? The alpha, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the alpha is our dominant rhythm, and that's the first brainwave that they studied um, and one of the most useful. Uh, alpha is such a healthy state when we can get into that. You feel relaxed. You're alert. Your brain's ready to think if it needs to, but it's not really processing. It's just a nice, relaxed, focused state to be in. The, the way I see your office and your business is you just come here to just get to know yourself better. Yeah. On the, yeah. On the, but not on the conscious level. There's a lot of it that's on the subconscious level. Yeah. And uh, I would say like 5% is conscious and 95% of what we do is unconscious. Yeah. So yeah. so there's a lot of things that I could keep telling myself on the conscious level, yeah. but it's not going to seep into my subconscious. Right. A lot of times people don't realize that their thoughts, you know, their thoughts come out of certain mental emotional states. You know, so if you're in a depressed state, you're going to have depressed thoughts. Um, that originate from that. And it's not like, it's not that something's wrong with your thinking, but if you get out of that state and you learn how to start focusing on something that you're grateful for instead, you're going to have grateful thoughts. And so a lot of people just don't know how to do that or don't have the mental flexibility, but even for high performers and people are getting into neurofeedback right now, because it's kind of a trendy thing to do. Um, It's just had such great results, but really people are using it for just biohacking and for really optimizing. That's that's um, what I'm here for. Because you're totally healthy, but we found some deviances and some things that we could yeah. Work on. Yeah, yeah, definitely want to work on some of those things. Yeah. Um, did you know for quarterbacks, like in football, like in college and uh, for NFL, they make them take an IQ test to see how intelligent they are. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, they do. But I could, I'm starting to see why. Because you need to make sharp decisions. Yeah. And you need to be really intelligent. Yeah. Or at least like know by the time you get to college. I'm sure you've played like Pee Wee and then high school and then college. They're like, can you make this split decisions? Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm sure they strap well, one of these on. Gosh, they should send them through here in the office. We'll give them a brain scan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> see what so, the alpha peak frequency is. Yeah, I would. I would love to see that. I will. I want to see this more used for like practical things, like people working in the office setting. Mm-hmm. Let's just say people that are in sales, mm-hmm. and someone throws like a curveball at them, and how their brain reacts, mm-hmm. and how they could go back. Yeah. And just check that. Yeah. And just yeah. be like, huh? Why? Why did I think that? They're like, well, you know, just dig deeper. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the I think that we could do so much with it. I would love to sit there and coach somebody through a process of releasing some past emotion or going through a trauma, and you could really see what their brain's going through. Um, and you know, I, that's that's for down the road. Right now, we're just doing straight neurofeedback protocols. But I'm uh, I'm never going to stop learning this stuff. I just decided I want to be the Utah Brain Master. <laughs> so yeah. until I until I uh, understand this as well as everybody, but it just seems like the the I mean, it's like quantum physics. There's a whole universe inside our mind. I don't think yeah. we're ever going to yeah. discover everything. Well, uh, I've interviewed a lot of people that are just uh, neurobiologists and just, you know, just do like perception and stuff. And I always ask them like, what's up with consciousness? Where did it come from? They're like, no, we don't know, man. They're like, that's like the next frontier. Yeah. Because there's not a place in the brain that you yeah. can pinpoint. There's no, I've got all these maps that are like here, this part's executive function, this part's emotional, and this is memories, but there's no part that's, hey, here's where your consciousness is. Yeah. yeah. There's, no, there, there's nothing like that. Where do you think you came from? <laughs> do you have? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's a spiritual type of thing, but um, awesome. I don't know. I, do our I consciousness, I just want to explore it. I, I'm, uh Yeah. You know, we talked about meditation and these different things. And I think um, it's like, where is the consciousness even localized? To me, it's it's all around. It's not even inside me. Um, and then there's like this collective consciousness. I, I, you know, there, there's like a higher self type thing that you could, I don't know what uh, what all you so believe in that, but I'm... I believe in it. I yeah. mean, yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, James sounds like a science nerd, but he's very spiritual, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've had to be. I'm, I've been through my own stuff. And so that's why I really, you know, feel for people. That's why my heart is in this because I love just seeing people's transformation is really <clears throat> like that. There's nothing better than that for me. 
like, you know, and it's even for my selfish ego. It's like to have people just thank you. It feels really good. Yeah. I have people here in the office just like, thank you so much for be, for bringing this, you know, and for helping me and it's changing my life. And you can just see people's transformations as they go through a neurofeedback protocol by the second and third week, they're changing their whole behaviors. They're thinking positively. They're not getting triggered um, into panic attacks or whatever they might, you know, it's just, it's amazing. We have people working on the autism spectrum. They're getting awesome results. And for children, we haven't talked about children, but learning disabilities, ADD. I remember they wanted to put me on medication because my brain wasn't normal in school. And I would, they, they couldn't figure it out because I'd score high on intelligence tests, but I couldn't turn in my homework and I couldn't keep my attention focused. Cause that shit's boring, bro. You, <laughs> I know. Did they ever wonder, do something that you like? Did yeah, they ever tell you like, that? You guys are just teaching me wrong but, yeah um, no that's I, the sad I, truth I, I had this i remember in third grade i think having this my parents collaborated with the teacher and i had this big sign on my desk that said jimmy it's time to work and they thought maybe if that was placed in my visual <laughs> that it would remind me that i need to focus on but you know they wanted to put me on drugs and they put me on something i don't even know what it Probably was red alone, bro. Back then. It, it wasn't one of the speeds because they were you know concerned with addiction and so they didn't do that but it but whatever it was took the color out of my life where I just didn't even enjoy it anymore. And I thought, I feel so bored that if this is what it feels like to be normal, I don't, because like when I'm distracted, things are entertaining and fun to me. And so I, I don't, I don't know, but I, I wasn't going to take it. Chad and Tatum, the actor, mm -hmm. he has ADHD too. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would take Adderall, mm -hmm. but he'd quit. And he's like, dude, I feel like a zombie. Yeah. No, that's like kind of like, you does. feel like, like, like a, like a very light version of a zombie. Yeah. Like you're there, but like the emotions have been inhibited a little bit. Mm -hmm. So why would you want to go through that, you know? Yeah. Like, no, it changes your brain waves, and those medications have long-lasting effects, too. I mean, they're most of the neuroscientists that I'm training with are not a fan of medications if you can avoid it just because, yeah, I mean, you might go on something for a year, and then you've quit for five years, but it's still affecting your brain waves. Um, really? You can see these things, yeah. ADD medication is great for reducing the theta um, brain waves. It's like a really like you're too relaxed when you should be alert, you know, kind of thing It's coming into your, you know, it's like you almost like you could think of you're starting to dream, but you're awake. It's, it's distracting. You don't, you're going to data or you, it's less data. That's a theta theta. What theta is just um, a slow brainwave that's associated with ADHD. Um, and so there's a lot of, um, yeah, just different training protocols for theta, but, but ADD medicine does accomplish that. It will reduce those theta waves and people will get benefit um, from the medication, but there's other ways to do it. And that's the main message that I have is there's like, you don't have to, I mean, it, it is more work to come in here and have to spend an hour a day with us every day. But Versus them popping a pill, but still dude, but this is temporary and the effects I'm sure will last yeah, a while. No, they've measured the effects 10 years, 20 years after. Um, and it's awesome to, to make a permanent change. You know, we can learn our, our brains never stop learning. Like until we're dead, we have neuroplasticity. Mm -hmm. and neuroplasticity, can, ladies and gentlemen, means your brain just continues to learn or it, it builds uh, new neurons. Yeah, new connections. Those, the, you know, the neurons are always in, in whatever kind of neural networks. You, you could think of there's a certain network that lights up for depression where there's a certain, you know, connections formed. So if you've done depression a lot, you know how to do it really well and you can fire that up right away. All those, you know, the, the you've heard this, um, what do they say? What, what does Joe say? The, the neurons that fire together wire, wire together. together. And yeah. if you fire those together enough times, it's going to be such a familiar place to be yeah. um, that you have to create new patterns of thinking, new ways, or it's just going to go back into that um, default uh, default setting. Yeah. You didn't go. You didn't go back to the way you were before. You didn't go back to that depression, that laziness, anxiety. Yeah. So if you develop new ways of uh, doing things, mm -hmm. you're building new habits. Yeah. Yeah. And doing it without a medication, like to me, that is kind of a little bit of a crutch. Like, yeah, you got rid of your theta waves, you're able to focus, but what do you do when you lose your medication or if, uh, you know, something closes down or whatever, you know, you're going to feel like a zombie where you can train those things. And um, so that's the thing is you can accomplish the same thing, but it's, you know, you have to come in and put time in instead of popping a pill once a day. So I think that's, I think that's why it's just the easiest thing to do. It seems really lazy to me not to, um, you know, make fun of doctors or anything, but it seems lazy to just send somebody away with a prescription for depression, knowing that they're going to get 27% of a chance they might even benefit. Man, the but if not, you're not going to see them for six weeks, so you don't really care. You yeah. know, you, you you collect from the insurance, they pay you, and you send them away, and that's a standard. Dude, that's the pharmaceutical companies are not going to like this. They don't, they, they don't advertise <laughs> TMS. They, they, they don't want someone to cure depression and get off their medication. Of that's course, they want to keep you hooked, bro, for like yeah. 10 years. Yeah. This is like a... Uh, a couple months, you would say someone would do this, 
and they're done for t- yeah yeah two months yeah let's just say they have depression not yeah. manic full-on depression but they have some form of depression yeah six to eight weeks um, consistently max, and then we want to let them get back to their life after that you know they, they it is a commitment to come in for six weeks dude uh, it's just an hour though but, Seriously. but for the benefit yeah yeah it's how long hour. how long do you think uh it takes let's just say someone that has depression they stop their meds they come in here when will they see some results you will say the first time? I mean, I would like to know. I'm going to ask you tomorrow how it was that for you after the neurofeedback session, if you noticed any difference. But some um, people will notice it the first time. I feel a like, difference right now. I'm a little more focused on you. Okay. Yeah, usually like I, I zone out a little bit. <laughs> or, See, so that's, or I yeah, think I mean, of other things, but I'm very focused on what you're telling me. Yeah, and it's like a workout. You know, you just tried out, you know, you went and checked out a new gym. You got a good workout in. But if you really want to create a long-term change, it, it comes through that repetition. Right, but I didn't get off my ass. I was sitting <laughs> on a chair. <laughs> Seriously. And I literally didn't do anything. It was uh, for 20 minutes. Yeah, you just. Um, my it was, it was scanning my brain to see what was uh, coherent, what was uncoherent. Mm-hmm. And it was like uh, giving me positive feedback in, uh, in, in ways of uh, visual, the percentage, which I wasn't really paying attention to. But mm-hmm. there was also auditory. It would mm-hmm. give me like a, a piano sounds. Yeah. Well, if anyone knows about neurofeedback, you are doing four channels Z-score training, which um, is training all seven major bandwidths of those brain waves from slow to fast. So it's like delta, theta, alpha, low beta, high beta, gamma. Um, so it's training all of those at once to that normative, you know, the, the normal or the standard um, target that you're going to hit. It's training the asymmetries, the, the way the brain communicates to the other parts, and it's doing all those things at the same time. So when you get over 60% of those things complete, it's rewarding you. So it's driving this behavior that's kind of like a cumulative behavior of a lot of things. Uh-huh. Yeah, but when you're over 60%, you're, you're getting the feedback. And so your brain is learning. It's going to be like, you know, it's just going to, it's really smart to figure out what is the pattern. How do I get that again? Um, we're just wired for rewards. Our system is like, that's a human uh, condition. And, and it wasn't on, actually, I was just trying to, yeah, I was literally trying to uh, get more sound. Mm-hmm. Like that's the reward. Yeah. So I was doing different things. First, I was work, concentrating on my breath. I knew you would. I yeah, of course, dude. Like You're going to outsmart that yeah. machine. And then I was like, dude, I don't want to meditate, but I did it for a minute. And like, it started playing louder and louder. Really? Because, yeah, your brain okay. starts like when, when you meditate. But yeah. that's like, I don't want to, like, I can't meditate all day, every day, dude. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. well, I have to be here physically. You know, yeah. I can't just close my eyes and sit on the wall. Yeah. yeah. Right. And yeah. just meditate. Um, so I was just doing different things. I was thinking of, uh, I was looking at the goal. Mm-hmm. And then I started doing visualization techniques. Mm-hmm. And it started getting a little, a little better and better. Mm-hmm. But and then, like, I would break concentration, and I would go back to it. So, like, uh, my brain was – because you just sit there for 20 minutes, ladies and gentlemen, on a couch or a chair, and you're just looking at a screen. Yeah. And and then there's, like, these cheetahs that kind of, like, go towards the goal, and it just repeat it, repeat it. Yeah. And when your brain is synced, it goes faster, yeah. right? Yeah. So I was just like, okay, so I was just visualizing the goal. Yeah. And then, like – just trying to calm down and it would go faster and faster. Yeah. So <laughs> so it's noticing that it's it's feedback. It gives you feedback on your brain activity in real time. And so you're yeah, so you're trying to learn more from it than what it's doing, but you're the the way it happens is unconscious. So you don't have to do all that work that Yeah, you, you do. don't have to do that. But I was like, <laughs> I want to beat this machine, dude. <laughs> yeah, I know, I knew I knew you would. Um, but it happens unconsciously. All you have to do is show up and watch the screen. And as long as you recognize that sounds are good and silence is not as good then it happens unconsciously. The timing is so um, accurate that, 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 you know, the timing of the reward, you'll hear it and register it unconsciously before you process that consciously. Okay. So it's, that's it's interesting. So automatic and what I really want to see is uh, someone that's like, I didn't know whatever. I don't know what the word average means. Um, okay. Yeah. So, so someone that is average um, puts on this machine and does like ayahuasca or some LSD. What Ooh. happens to her brain, bro? I don't know if they're able to hold still to keep that cap on. But no. Really? <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm really curious about it. And in fact, we had when I was, gosh, I'm in my QEG training and I was just looking through the notes and there was a thing on LSD. It was it, it was interesting. Yeah, so I don't know um, how all those affect the brain. I'd be super curious. Yeah, I would just want to see the regular brain waves. Yeah. Just for like 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. And just pop them with, I don't know, LSD or something like that. Because yeah. uh, LSD is a psychedelic drug, ladies and gentlemen, that, that completely trips you out. Yeah. Which was also invented by the CIA. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you know, they're doing research on that that I'm super interested in. And I'm, I'm really open to anything. I mean, I, I tell people, like, I'll look into anything that works. But I do. I mean, I'm a data-driven person. I want to see brother. the science behind me too. it. That's but why I, I like Joe Dispenza. Me and you like Joe Dispenza. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I like the mystical. 
and I know there's something there, bro. Yeah. But uh, uh he's putting that together. The mystical is, with bro. the science. I love he it. Yes, he is. Yeah. So what he calls is, uh, I want to demystify the mystical. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, because there's something to it. Yeah. And uh, there's a pattern mm-hmm. of how people can have experiences and be able to heal themselves. Mm-hmm. And uh, when people go into like random remission where they cure cancer, mm-hmm. it's really not that random. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's certain things that they do. Yeah. Where they surrender, they give up, they calm down. The mind is so powerful. Yeah, man. Yeah. So powerful. There's been so many stories. I mean, the mind can heal itself. I, you can you can heal your body with the mind. Yeah, I think the, I mean, I, I think there's so much we can do with this. Yeah. Tell me about that one machine that you have where you lay down on it with yeah, the crystals. Yeah, that's the audio visual entrainment. That's a really cool, that was, <laughs> I had those, at, uh, I bought one at, a, at one of the life coaching trainings that I did a long time ago. So I, I, done that before but that one's for people a lot of people can't meditate nowadays especially if we're used to you know being on our phones and checking social media and we're highly distractible like that it's just you know some people can't even sit still for 10 minutes and they just (laughs) it's like the hardest thing ever so if you know if you have trouble with that this thing will sink your brain waves into what we have programs for theta for alpha so explain to explain to everyone what it is well it's um some people have heard of binaural beats and it's not that but i just i named that because it's something familiar to some people but it's basically using headphones and using the right and left um ear and playing tones that are kind of out of sync with each other so it creates a phase and that's without getting too technical like that phase pattern um, goes at a certain frequency that the brain can sync up with so as you go through these things they're meant to carry you from either like you know if you're in an anxious state it kind of starts out and it'll it'll just take your brain waves it kind of just is scanning through and collecting and it just targets them down to um <laughs> I, I totally butchered the explanation of that but basically you know you could lay on this mat um, for 30 minutes and get into a highly meditative state with the help of the audio visual entrainment so it's got um the frequency that it pulses lights on your eyes that's synced up with the sound in your ears that's also synced up with the electrodes on your earlobes that's giving some electrocranial stimulation that matches with the pattern too so it's kind of two treatments in one on that and it's uh and then while you're taking that treatment you lay on the the mat that's like six other treatments but that's so just kind of a so it's like three different sensory things put in together it's visual auditory yeah. and it's and uh, kinesthetic. Kinesthetic, cause, yeah, kinesthetic yeah kinesthetic yeah because it's shocking you and plus you're on the mat i've done the mat mm-hmm. uh when someone gave me a massage mm-hmm. dude they just sent me somewhere else like i was so calm yeah i knew i didn't it was i think i went to data data yeah. so 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 ladies and gentlemen data is when you lay down and you're not quite asleep but yeah. you're not really here either yeah they say uh some people say it's good for creative visualization um you're open up creativity. Your mind's really loose and kind of wandering. You're not quite asleep, but you know, um, my trainer uh, said a lot of monks are able to go into theta. You yeah, know, it's something if you practice. So, um, you know, so you're, you're on the beta level right now, which is pretty good. But you know, keep working. Uh, I am, theta, dude. <laughs> delta is good. That delta is where <laughs> delta. Then happen. you'll be asleep. Yeah, I don't know. Not delta. I'm sorry. It's uh, theta. Yeah, theta. Yeah, beta. Um, yeah, it is. And then apparently if it's in gamma, you're just like, I don't know, you're somewhere else yeah, <laughs> consciously. They, they say it's hard to measure, but you're, you know, the Z-score training does treat the gamma because you had some uh, gamma excess, if I can say that. I guess yeah, hey, say whatever you want, dude. I don't care. <laughs> I'm like, that's not HIPAA yeah. complaining. But, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> nah, you can say whatever you want, bro. So, I don't care. so, yeah, the gamma was getting trained, but those gamma frequencies are like, people say that's, you know, these, these like, those are on the level of psychic frequencies and other things that we don't totally yeah. understand. Oh, now you're going to the supernatural. Yeah, and so that's why that gamma light frequency i mean i think i'm seriously going to do that tonight as soon as i get home and let me know what happens i I mean i want to invite you back to try it and see because i'll um, try it bro i've heard this guy was this doctor was telling me he's like you know 60 something these days and he said i used to i was experiencing some cognitive decline and he swears that this thing has just cleared it up he's like if i'm feeling slow or sluggish or my mind's not he's like i'll I'll go on 20 minutes and i'm just back and uh, really and and if, if it's anywhere as good as he suggested i'm um you know, and if not, I'll get my money back. What, what I do right now when I'm fleeing, feeling slow and sluggish is then I, I take a really, really cold shower for like oh, a minute yeah, or two. That's, yeah. But that wakes me up. Yeah. My yeah. whole body and stuff. Yeah. Um, It's very uncomfortable, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Very. And it hurts a little bit because it feels like there's spikes on you. I've got a comfortable one. That's a good, that's a good one. But I'm also jumping on a rebounder. Is What's that, a rebounder? Is nice way. Like, like a, a jumpy trampoline? trampoline? Oh, yeah. yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Jing, jing, we have one in the backyard. Yeah, yeah, I should jump okay. on that. <laughs> yeah, it sim- stimulates your lymphatic system and kind of detoxifies. But it'll definitely wake you up if I have days when I 
just don't have enough coffee to wake me up. Like, jump yeah. Me. But that rush, I feel <laughs> like it only lasts like two or three hours. It's not really a rush. It's me just waking up and just being in the present moment. Yeah. But I want to get there all day. Yeah. And I feel like having neurofeedback, yeah. along with meditation, yeah. um, could really help. Because I feel I, like this is just another tool. Yeah. Because people like, shun technology, but you should embrace it. Yeah, yeah, and the technology can help us. But there's, I love doing all that stuff at the same time. The um, ice baths, breath work, um, all those things can accomplish the same. You know, you can, you guys can do these things at home. A lot of people that come to see us at this point, they they can't deal with their issues on their own anymore. They haven't been meditating. They haven't done any ice baths lately. You know, so they they need more help, and um, so we're able to get them you know, really some progress fast if they're in that condition. Yeah. But or, ladies and gentlemen, people that are dealing with their issues like me, I just want to optimize yeah, like it, me. dude. Yeah. I just want to optimize. I just want to get better at it. Yeah. Like, why Why don't, like, just know thyself. Yeah. Just get better at doing what you're doing, dude. Yeah. When when you get a brain map of your brain and you can see what, it's, it's like a user manual. I mean, you know, that's just information that you can use. If you know that you're prone to a certain thing, you can compensate consciously for that. You know, even would, if you don't want to do neurofeedback. I told you I'm going to Peru, right? In Guatemala in like two weeks. You, I think you did mention that last Dude, time. I want to put this. Remember I told you about the dark room? Did I tell you about that? Sensory deprivation. Yeah. yeah. Well, I wonder what would happen if I was wearing that. <laughs> I think your alpha waves would be really high. <laughs> At least for the first two days. But then, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But but that's cool because uh, first it's mobile. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like you could take it. You could use it. Let's say you have to use the restroom. Mm -hmm. And you come back to work. How does your brain change? Your brain waves. Do you use focus? Um, you go out for smoke. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it fires some neuro. Oh yeah, neurons. Yeah, it you know, does, yeah, yeah, it definitely does. I'm sure people that smoke cigarettes is what I mean, not weed or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, or let's just say you know, like, uh, you're 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 shy. Yeah. You want to go talk to a girl. Yeah. Uh, what happens to your brain? Yeah. Like you start a lot you know, of like, beta, a lot of high beta, yeah, a lot of high beta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's a great example because if you're able to go talk to a girl and maintain a, an alpha frequency, you're going to be relaxed and confident with, yeah, but if your mind starts racing with um, yeah, you know, that kind of stuff totally can be trained. And I'm not talking about a club or a bar. I'm talking about, let's just say you blindly go out uh, at a grocery store, which most people don't do. Like right. at a, a bar, I feel like that's a social setting Yeah, and it's acceptable. Yeah. But I'm talking about somewhere else like, you know, Whole Foods. Oh, yeah, TV, yeah. 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 The girl in the spandex, you know, we've all saw her. <laughs> <laughs> we've all seen her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, dude, um, Joe Dispenza, you were talking about. I was just gonna say he uses the same technology to do brain scans Big before time. and after his um, trainings. I don't know if your audience knows that, but I, yeah, I would love to go because you can. You know, he doesn't do any neurofeedback. I don't think he just does the brain scan. Then he does all his meditation um, stuff, and then he measures you at the end so you can compare to see how much was accomplished on that brain scan just through practices that you could probably do at home. So, so learning. now he does it during. Before, oh, during, and after. Okay. So he can see when someone has a full blown mystical experience. Okay. Yeah. And wow. yeah, he always says it. He's like, he calls it, they're about to pop. Yeah. So that means, like, uh, from what he says, they reach source. Or go. maybe, you, yeah, you gotta go, I bro. Gotta go see this. Yeah. <laughs> or they reach their, uh, I call this when you go into uh, data. Mm -hmm. It's like when, when you're in really, really deep, relaxed between that dream state and that waking state. Yeah. Um, apparently, you're in the operating system. Yeah. So that means you're in your subconscious mind. Yeah. And let's just yeah. say you're sick. You want to heal yourself. Dude, it's totally possible. I've seen it with my own eyes, man. Yeah. And I've talked about it on this podcast numerous times. People yeah. going with stage four cancer and healing themselves. Yeah. And then I thought about it afterwards. I was like, dude, if they could do this. Yeah. Ain't this possible. Yeah. Well, we know about the placebo effect. Yeah. I mean, that, that's common to medicine. In fact, doctors know that, and that's that's what they <laughs> – you think of that 27% that got help with depression. How many of those were helped just by the placebo? I, I don't know, but doctors count on the placebo to be part of what makes it work. And so that's part of – you know, when they're giving you a medication, they want to sell you on it. Like, hey, you're going to feel better. You're going to notice you feel better after this, and they're giving you suggestions like that. Um, but they know how powerful the placebo is because you do trials, and sometimes people will heal themselves from the disease, and they're taking a fake pill – um, Bro, but our minds are so. There's studies done where they don't even have to give them the right pill. So if it's a doctor mm -hmm. and there's a guy that's like a career car salesman, he doesn't know anything about neurofeedback or yeah. science or like you know, and he has major depression, mm -hmm. and the doctor makes up something mm -hmm. and says, "Oh, this cures like 95 percent of people mm -hmm. within the first six weeks. Yeah. If you take this, just take one every day while you eat." And he's very serious and makes a bunch of shit up. These people will get better, bro. Yeah. But so, that's so, dumb. It's not the pill. Yeah. So think what what about when the what about the nocebo or what about when the doctor says, 
there's no cure for depression. Because that's, that's what they say. They say really? There's, they say no, that? there's no known cure for depression. The best you're ever going to get is remission. But so, then you're not a really cured. You're just not having symptoms right there. I, I don't know what the difference is. Because to me, when somebody tells me I'm 100% symptom-free from depression, that that sounds like a cure to me, but we're not allowed to say that because there is no cure for depression. So how does that feel if somebody's like, yeah, you're going to die from this disease, but other people have lived through it? You know, so, I mean, I just think that that goes the opposite way too when they say you're going to do really well on this medication, you're going to heal, but a lot of doctors are giving bad news too. And um, I just think that's interesting. I think that is bro. Uh, like, uh, cause I come from like an old country, like the Soviet Union. When mm-hmm. I, I mean, I came in when I was a baby. Um, but apparently when people had like uh, stage four cancer back in the day, mm-hmm. the doctor wouldn't even tell the patient. They would tell their family mm-hmm. without the patient knowing. They're like, hey, he has six months to live. Yeah. So apparently that would help the patient live longer because the family would give them extra attention. Yeah. And it would yeah. help them. Versus yeah. here, bro, they're like, oh, you know what? You have stage four cancer. You're going to die in six months. Yeah. There's nothing we could do. And even if it's true or not, this person's going to get sick and die, bro. Because mm-hmm. they believe it. Yeah. But the uh, opposite could happen too. Mm-hmm. So the, yeah. the point is the mind is a very powerful thing, bro. Yeah. Don't believe everything you hear. <laughs> if yeah. it doesn't serve you, believe it if it serves you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it can definitely help you out, bro. So I'm definitely an intramatch. I cool. do want to see the gamma machine um, work. But now you said something about psychics and going into gamma brainwaves. Yeah. What do you know about that? Now I want to know a little more. Because it is magic, dude. <laughs> it's Because we don't know about it a whole lot. Yeah. What I know is that it's very mysterious. And uh, <laughs> I know that there's Z-score training on it, which, you know, we don't have to use our brains at the Z-score training because the, the software does it automatically. Didn't, didn't mine have some? You had excess gamma for sure. Yeah. So yours was going down. Um, those excess gamma high frequencies could be... It, it, well, it definitely could be anxiety if it's like mixed with the high beta going all the way into gamma. High beta is, you know, um, some 25, we'll just say like 25 hertz all the way. And then I think gamma starts at 40. That's just the speed of uh-huh. like how many oscillations per second, right, on this wavelength. So um, gamma is a very high frequency, very hard to measure, but they're exploring it. I didn't know that they just had a study at Stanford with this um, Aragon photobiomodulation with results for Alzheimer's. And so it's just being studied right now, but I think it's so new that this is literally, you know, that's, I, I talked with this doctor and he said, you know, out of all of the treatments that are out there, he, you know, he, he's like, you're offering the best ones. You're, you're doing a good job. I, I haven't, there's not a lot of people that offer neurofeedback with TMS in the same office. And he was saying, you know, with the audiovisual entrainment, he's like, this is the next thing you need to have this. So I kind of jumped on the bandwagon a little bit early with it. Um, but it is our third treatment. We offer it for free to anyone who's taken one of the first two. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, you, ready. You, I'm ready to go. Yeah. You're going to do it. You're going to try it. Yeah. Dude, yeah, I want to try know. everything myself first of too. Course. Before I try on the patients. Yeah. yeah. And what I like about you is uh, you're up to date on the technology. So yeah. when I pulled out my uh, podcast equipment, you haven't knew the focus, <laughs> right? So like, dude, these headphones are nice. <laughs> I He's love like, good equipment. Yeah, of course, but it helps you. But most people are like kind of skimp on that. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't understand why, dude. You want like... So so when I started this podcast, I had no idea what I was doing. And I reached out to a lot of people and they really didn't want to help me. Mm -hmm. So I read online. They're like, listen, just get the best possible audio equipment. Yeah. that's yeah. They're like the video, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's it's a regular camera. Mm -hmm. But the audio, just get the best you can. Yeah. Because people are just going to listen to it. Yeah. Versus like you, you're going to scam people's brains. Yeah, but you were smart. I got the I got that roadcaster. You know what that is? That yeah, yeah, I know what that is. That's what Joe Rogan. Yeah, Yeah. I'm mobile. But I'm going to like Peru. I've been to Metro. I've been yeah. like to different states. You know, like like I can't really put this. Like most people, I did it once. Mm-hmm. I had the 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 Shure. Yeah. And I, the guy was blind, bro. <laughs> and a super cool guy. Yeah. Um, he was a magician. Yeah. Surprisingly, and uh, crazy thing. Oh man, we just scan his brain, bro. Yeah. He said that uh, he relies Same. on people's audio, uh, his, their voices. Yeah. To tell. If they're happy or sad or anything like that, because he can't see them, wow, and he's a yeah. magician on stage. Yeah. So, so he's. Like, I'm like, but how do you know if you're doing good or bad? He's like, the people clap. And he's like, I could feel it in the room. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. That yeah. would be fun. Yeah. Um. But anyways, people keep moving their heads, and I have to tell them like, hey, can you just concentrate on the mic? Yeah. yeah. So that's a problem. Yeah. Um. But that's why I went with this. So. Yeah. Now I like. Uh. Well, I definitely appreciate good hardware. 
yeah i'm a dj and i like music production and so i have yeah i have some of this equipment and <laughs> podcasting stuff yeah. Yeah, yeah dude um it's it's awesome i want to see where you can take it uh the possibilities are endless because honestly like your brain is off sometimes um what do you think is the most op- optimal time of day to work do you know well our brains are for most people and everyone's different right but for most people i think the morning time is generally thought of as the most you know you're the most you just got rest i mean there's so many like if if we would just we could cure a lot of mental health issues if people could just get better sleep you know that's like there's these baseline things that just most people we know when we're just working at jobs and we have families and all these things where you know, sacrificing our sleep and one thing leads to another. I mean, all of a sudden, you know, I'm starting a new business here. I know my anxiety went up compared to what it was before when I was just running my one other business. Yeah. Um, but, you know, a new and, and I've seen my insomnia suffer a little bit, um, especially because I started doing two weeks. I did about two weeks of neurofeedback and started sleeping great. And then we got so busy and you came in, I think the week we, we just got so busy here at the clinic that um, our schedule filled up. We had one piece of hardware go out and we were so we'd, bunch of things but i basically stopped neurofeedback after a couple of weeks um and i'm going to get back on it tonight but i immediately um, my insomnia came back and um you know when we're going through major changes like i'm starting a new business i just feel like this is the time that i need to train my brain constantly like i i shouldn't have even stopped even though we were so busy i need to make myself a priority because if i don't take care of myself how am i going to help other people and how that's really very true bro there? Most people don't understand that because yeah. they're givers. I feel like you're a giver too because you're very yeah. kind. You let me play with your machine and you went above and beyond, which I appreciate. Yeah. But a lot of people just like like help other people and they forget about themselves and they're held those to shit. Like, no, take care of yeah, yourself that's first. Right. Yeah, that's right. Dude, so take many. care of yourself first. True. Yeah, because then you're going to be dead and all these people still want more help from you. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. That I, I mean, one of my one of my uh, trainer that I just really respect a lot um, passed away, you know, and he was um, – he was had just not taken care of himself for years because he was so focused on helping people. He just didn't help himself at all. Hell no. He didn't take time to eat and healthy because he was just eating fast food because he just needed to get back in the training room. You know, but um, yeah. we can't do ourselves like that. Like, no, we have problem. to. It's all about self care. Yeah, I, um, I actually had a friend that had depression, and he went and saw a psychologist, and the psychologist explained to him, "Say you're on the plane, and you have kids or people around you." And uh, there's a big time turbulence. The plane's going down, and you know those air things drop where you should put on the air mask. Yeah. Like, yeah. who? What do you do first? You put yours on first. You're supposed to. Yeah. And then you help the people around you, yeah. right? Yeah. But that's how life should be. And that's how it is. I think. I think. Um. You know, people come in. They're like, I wanna, I wanna help my brother, and I wanna help my dad, and they're, they're like, these people around me have all these problems, and I'm like, help yourself. Um. If you can, if you can heal yourself, you will heal the people around you. For sure. I mean, yeah. I have. I, I've. I. Th- that's how I got into this. Is I'm healing myself, and then <clears throat> I'm just having people come to me asking for help, and I just realized I'm having an influence on people, and I really need to take this somewhere, dude. Uh, because I got it. So when you go see a doctor and give you meds, it's like giving the person a fish for a day. Yeah. Versus they come here within six to eight weeks, they're done. That's exactly. And you taught them how to go fishing. I'm gonna use that. <laughs> Damn, that's actually pretty good. I just thought about it because seriously, yeah. you're teaching them how to go fishing. Yeah, yeah. And then, but no, then and the, you can't unlearn something. So once you know how to fish, you can't forget how, you're not going to forget how to fish. I mean, you might forget the technique, but you really can't. Your unconscious mind will never unlearn something that you've really learned. So when you've come in here and your mind knows better states of being, because it wasn't trained that way in the past, but now you've created new ways yeah. of being, you'll never forget that. Yeah, you could go back to your old ways and start putting old patterns back over the new patterns that you made. But those patterns never go away, and it's going to be easier. You know, even if you go off the rails, come back to it, you'll get back on it easier the second time. You never unlearn something. You can use that for marketing too. Free. I'm We're on camera, you. dude, and audio. I said that. <laughs> Teach people how to go fishing, bro. Seriously, yeah. That's literally the process. Yeah. Like, if you want to put it in very layman, basic terms, because we just complicate things a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. how we do it everything in life. Yeah. But like, yeah, it's like taking a pill. Someone teaches you or gives you a piece of fish, or you go fishing. Catch as many fish as you want, bro. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, last question. I, I, we're going to end this on a good term. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are sad. They're depressed. Um, they should say their life is not going the right way. What would be some advice that you would be able to give them? I always ask people these questions because I know you've been there. Oh, I, yeah. Yeah, I've been there. Well, I mean, first of all, just know that it doesn't have to be that way. And I don't care how far somebody's gone down. <clears throat> there's There's never a point that somebody can't rebuild their life you know we have to live with the consequences and and we need to take responsibility for um 
you know, for our actions. Uh, so I would say, first of all, just be patient with yourself. Most people are doing the best they can with the resources they have. Some people don't have, and we've become a lot less resourceful nowadays. Um, there's just so many distractions and so many pressures that we're going to be less resourceful. So, you know, be kind to yourself. But um, as far as for depression, I mean, depending on where you're at, there's a lot of things that you can do. The, the simplest things to do is just start getting good sleep, start taking care of yourself and eating a healthy diet. And uh, come, come here, and dude. do some exercise. I mean, really working out was also shown to be more effective than depression medication. Just by itself, like you don't have to come to Zion. Really? So you can go to the gym <laughs> and it will get you better results than antidepressants. And if you want to optimize your brain, come here. Yeah. Yeah. But I would say the biggest two lessons on just life lessons that I always share with people, if uh, and this could go into a whole other training, but um, when you learn to be at cause, I don't know if you've heard of this, but I really think every personal development class uh, training that I've been to teaches this lesson in one way or the other, that taking 100% responsibility for our results in our life is one of the hardest things to do. It can be a constant effort, but it can be, uh, you know, because even that it's like the good, the bad, everything, you, we take responsibility for it. Um, not in the way that we're like blaming ourselves for our mistakes, but it's a way of empowering yourself to know that you are the one that creates change in your life. And when you start to see yourself as the cause of action in your life and not like life's happening to you, but that you have created, you know, your results. And that's just hard for people to hear. Like Joe Dispenza says, this, instead of cause and effect, yeah. you're the one causing the effect. Yeah. You could cause yeah. a positive effect. I'm telling you, everybody, Tony Robbins, any trainer that's good will teach that as a core principle. It's like you got to Jack, Jack Canfield is one of the first lessons. They'll, they'll tell you on day one, take 100% responsibility, stop making excuses, stop blaming other people, and stop complaining. And, uh, and be patient with yourself, you know, but, um, but being at cause and then learning how to focus on what you want. Most yeah. people are focused on their past, focused on what they're afraid of, what they don't want. If you learn to start focusing on your goals, where are you headed? Who are you becoming now? Don't, don't dwell on the past. Nice. You're a new person now. Uh, Bill Gates said this, uh, not that I care about money or wealth a whole lot, but he's like, if you're born poor, that's not your fault. But if you die poor, that's your fault. Yeah, well, he as in he's, he's wanting us all to die now. I mean, <laughs> I'm kidding. Dude, I, don't I had to throw that. <laughs> I, I, no, I, I just Bill have to throw the curveball. Throwing the curveball. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Just that. joking. I, I. No problem, brother. <laughs> um, cool, man. I see. And he has a sense of humor. Thanks. <laughs> thanks so much for having oh, yeah, me. Yeah, I got jokes. If you guys come in here, you will have to put up with a few jokes. Oh, mine, good. Good. We'll because be laughter is actually cures things too, bro. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah. Laughter cures a lot of diseases. No, we should be a breath of fresh air. You come into Zion Healing Center, we better be a breath of fresh air. And if not, let me know and I'll make changes. But, good. Um, this is a place to heal and this is a place that anybody can come. I'll offer uh, your viewers this. This is already expired, but if anybody wants that special that you got with the $50 brain scan, yeah. if they... If they mention that they heard it from this or anything, I will I'll honor that same price that you got because we already stopped that special once the um, schedule was full. Nice. But if anyone wants to do it and get one of these brain scans, it comes out with five reports that you'll get to keep. You can come in here. It um, takes about an hour to just talk with me and complete the whole scan. Um, so $50 will cover the brain scans, reports, and one training session. Nice. Which is what you did today. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome, brother. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Here. Thank you. Um, thanks for jumping on my podcast. I appreciate it. I'll yeah. post your information online. Awesome. And ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and subscribe to this episode because I'm definitely going to have them back.